All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the PvP Season 31 wrap-up. Today we're going to take a look at the rewards from PvP Season 31 and go over what we saw in Season 31 and uh, talk about what we all fought through. So let's see if the rewards are done calculating. Zero seconds remaining. Oh, no, there we go. So there is the 100k silver... There's the 10 gold. Here is the Lucio Cannon Wub Wub device. And I know it's Wub Wub, but I'm calling it Wub Wub because, yeah. It, it, it's definitely Lucio Dubstep. I feel they absolutely ripped this right off of Lucio in Overwatch. And I'm going to go over that in a minute. So we have the Infiltrator's Vortex suit. And of course, the big one of it. Everybody's favorite Pokemon, Songbird. It's actually kind of cool with the purple wings. So last night, because I had been training Night America and Moondragon perfectly together for a few weeks now, I almost sent them both to train for 32 hours. And I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to leave a spot open for Songbird. And I did. So I got lucky. So here we are. Here's purple Jean Grey. And we caught her robbing a jewelry store. Now remember people, the suit is not automatic. Don't make that mistake. You have to research it. And hey, yay, my silver is above 8 million again. And you can speed it up for free. Something that I always make the same mistake on season after season. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look over at Songbird. And then we'll try out the suit and the cannon. And I'll show you how my last day of PvP went over here. So we've got everybody in low. Where is she? There she is. Here's old hag Jean Grey. Flying, screaming Mimi. She's a tactician and a blaster. Second chance. Chance to grant an ally an extra turn after their action. Chance to avoid attacks. Chance to counter attacks. Let's see, I bet you she's going to wear blaster isos. By the way, today's background soundtrack is brought to you by the Destiny OST. Oh wow, she's going to be running tactician isos, nice. Is she going to get anything out of snappy service? Ranged in Sonic, Melee Sonic. Here's dildo and the gavel. That's that's what solid rhetoric looks like to me. It's it's a dildo and a gavel. Either that or a very purple submarine breaching out of the water. But it's it's dildo and the gavel. Which almost sounds like some weird crime drama on an adult network. No time for dildo and the gavel. Coming up next on dildo and the gavel. Kid Gavel rescued Dildo from the evil nefarious henchman. Oh, she's getting... Well, yeah, she could get one thing off of Snappy Service. Her level 9. And actually, it seems like it would be worth it. It would be worth a Snappy Service for that. And in looking at her team up, she's pretty big with Ant-Man and Anti-Venom. She's got a bunch of threes. She's got some with Electra. Fixer's really good at four. Power to Duck and Hybrid got some threes. Iron Fist has got a three. Jessica Jones. Misty Knight has Moonstone's got three. Vegas Sentinel's got three. Punisher's got four. Shocker's got four, two. So she's got a bunch of three team-ups, and four seems to be her best with, like, Punisher, Winter Soldier, and Fixer.
All right, let's try all this stuff out in today's daily mission. Then we need to make sure that a standard daily is uh, a standard daily is up on the day when PVP ends. It's just so much nicer to know that you can take the person right out. So it looks like you're gonna have to find her via blaster. And let's get on the new suit over here. It's an infiltrator, which isn't too bad for the daily. There's no scrappers in today's daily. So there it is. Residual Vortex Energy grants combat reflexes to all allies when attacking or being attacked by a tactician. So we're going to get to actually experience this one today. God, it looks like the Black Gate or the Black Vortex is just coming right out through the center of my chest. So this is all going to be alphabetical here. Actually, fuck it. We're, we're not going to wait through this over here. Just take it off a of full screen. So after we see the suit and the Wub Wub device, actually since I'm not bringing Shayna, I think I'll get rid of the Pound of Cure. I love running the Pound of Cure when I'm running Shayna. It's a really good setup weapon for her. Come on, game. So in all honesty, I think one of the best things this suit could do is run Yukemi for next season. If we still have a lot of Spitfires running around. And I'd say maybe like Yukemi and Intangible and then it's up to you if you want to run the Covert ISO. You may have other infiltrators that will work out better with. Widow's Way would be good. Because it would be a way of generating stealth even if the, uh, the setup on the board doesn't provide you with stealth. So there goes Amp It Up from the Wub Wub Cannon. All right, so in looking at the functions of the Wub Wub Cannon, we have amped up, 20% chance to avoid enemy attacks, deals extra damage on attacks. And it goes out for the whole team, just like Beta Ray Bill. We have Pick Up the Beat. Sonic Acceleration grants each other party member an extra turn. And we have the Amped Up. We have the Sound Barrier. All allies. Sound Barrier and Regeneration. And one enemy gets Sonic Boom. Ethereal, well, the Ethereal Strike is because of Phase uh, Disoriented Weak Point and Seismic Feedback. So this seems like it would be a pretty good weapon for snappy service if you could do it. Chance for ranged attacks to fail, fear and delirium. So we'll need to experiment with, the, with that against Kurth. Well, it looks like her passive just kicked in over there. That was pretty cool. One of the last two days for snowballs. So Lead by Light is now officially at level 3, which is the full stack. So this should be a pretty... Wow, I just... Uh, apparently, I just shit out my glow over here, and now it's hanging below me. Very interesting. There's the He-Man pose. Also, Lino from the Thundercats. Yeah, you really want to try to get the Wub Wub Cannon going with Snappy Service, if possible. Or even War Stories. War Stories would probably be really big with this. Uh, apparently, I just keep shitting out my glow over here.
Hesitant aim just worked. This is a really stamina consuming gun. It's weird to watch the glow just keep going up from my chest and down below my balls over here. So before we go back and take a look at them in action a little bit more, I will show you guys what my last day of PvP was like, and we'll talk about PvP and how the season was for most people. So here were my attacks after I uh, woke up and everything. As you can see, what was really surprising is that I didn't manage to get any attacks or any defenses while I was running my last set of attacks. This is all the last hour of PvP and nothing came in, which to me was really shocking. And I went to bed before the last day at this fight here on Loki at uh, 2118. So I took 13 fights overall in the last night. Fairly high volume, considering there was just a constant flow of attacks on Sunday. Um, I mean, it would maybe be 10-15 minutes before I would check PvP, and I got a lot of 2s and 3s in here. Um, it's, it's off the screen now, but... I mean, there were times where I would maybe go about 20 minutes and not check PvP and log in and see I took three attacks. So the volume was, I'd say, fairly strong until maybe about 10, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, and then it thinned out a little bit. So, my defensive team, pretty much the whole season, it, it changed a little bit. There was a first half and a second half. In the beginning half, it was my Bruiser E3 with, like, Back From War and, uh, Scudum. And I forget what else. Maybe Intangible. I can't remember. I definitely know it was, uh, Back From War and Scudum. And, uh, Big and Fast, actually. And it was Cloak and Dagger and Spitfire. And it was a regular loadout over here. The, the weather controlled, uh, the Lantern and... Maybe the weather control device, the cube. I mean, kind of standard. Right around the midway mark, I was like, okay, I'll give in to the drain meta a little bit and swap things up. Because Spitfire and Cloak and Dagger weren't doing that great. So I actually wound up going to the Toxic Suit one day before they nerfed it. So I only had a few attacks of the old Toxic Suit. And then they nerfed it, but then... I was still winning actually rather well after the switch, so I ended up with Kirk, Kirth and um, Cloak and Dagger. Kirth took over my Scootin, which I know is douchey. She double drains, but I don't have a bruiser on my defense team anymore, so why not? And then my Cloak and Dagger is running intangible along with the Covert ISO. And I switched it up to the Psych Operator, the Cube. This was the Staff of Agony until the last day, and then it became the Lunacy. It had some good success to swap it out, but other than that, it didn't really make the biggest amount of difference. And then the TOE, so that my Agent and Kurth kind of rise above all the psychic bullshit. Offense the entire season was Spitfire, Cloak and Dagger, and my Suicide setup over here was really nice to fly above the whole meta the entire season. I only had one fight where the enemy's drain suit actually came into play. And I, I did have some recharge difficulties there. But fortunately, um, I was able to get ahead of it. Especially with Cloak and Dagger using her big heal. Now in the season, we definitely saw several trends. One, Warding Essence was not going away if you killed the agent before Warding Essence was due to expire. That, I believe, is a bug. And I discussed it with Playdom support, but I also mentioned that Spitfire was not regening her stamina if she had Despair. Playdom did harp on that with me a little bit and say that's kind of intended. Uh, do you know of anybody else who's doing that? And honestly, I really didn't. 
But they forgot to talk about the warding essence. Much like magic warding back several seasons ago when it was really big, I think the warding essence absolutely should go away if you kill the agent who is providing it. The game has never had that before where as long as you start the buff of the round, you're guaranteed to have it. I, I think that's kind of shit. If you kill the agent who is holding the warding essence, it should go away. It used to be if you killed Pesty and then a warning essence was due to kick in if Pesty died, the warning essence or the mystic would kick in. This season it wasn't. If you killed Pesty, the whole debuff removal thing was still out on the field. That's another bug, I believe. The other thing is, yes, we saw that Despair would stop Cur uh, Spitfire from regenerating her stamina if she killed somebody with Voracious Vixen. You can make an argument either way on that. It is tied to an ability that recharges her health, but you're still saying that stamina is tied to health gains, even if it's tied to a health gain on a move, which I don't know um, if, if that should really be the truth. Stamina should be independent of health. And, okay, if your health is locked down from gaining, so what? Your stamina should still gain. Especially in a drain-heavy meta. So that's one thing we saw a lot of this season. We did see a lot of the Toxic Suit. And for a lot of people, the Toxic Suit absolutely came into play and totally locked people down. It was so bad, and there was so many complaints about it, that about halfway through the season, Playdom changed it and took it away from free actions. So that helped a bit, but it was still very, very tough, because the Drain meta put the Worthy in an even better spot. Kurth and Null are guaranteed to use a debuff item pretty much in the first round. Not always, but 90% of the time you're going to get a Fear Me and you're going to get a Null Squat. It's very easy to attach the Spare, Straining, Endemic, uh, the Vampiric Debuff one to that, and just further Assault Stamina and everything. Cloak and Dagger is a little bit more 50-50 on that, but the Worthy, their power spot just continued to spike this season because of the Drain meta. And, you know, anything debuff, work with it. The Blackest Void, the Level 1 of the Lantern, the Psych Operator is really ridiculous with the Drain meta. Because if this, if, if this is what you lead with, you've now removed Mystic or Warding Essence. That means all of your other Drain functions will assault Stamina. The Experiment was more frequently used this season because the Experiment was a good counter to the psychic stuff and it actually worked as part of the drain meta if you attacked an agent who was running the experiment your stamina got chunked and if they use the experiment now the whole enemy team will assault your stamina so the experiment is uh good and good on the other side of the coin toe was a real dividing point in the community everybody knew that you needed to run this but not everybody has it, and that created a lot of angst and jealousy within the season. Like, everybody's like, oh, run a TOE, and the other half like, I don't have the TOE, fuck you. What am I going to do? Uh, I actually ran into a Kurth and Magneto team on Sunday before PvP ended to try to counter Psychic Meta. So the other thing that I need to deal with this season, and this is what I brought out in a video... A few days before the season ended. I wanted to do that video before the season ended. Because I didn't want people to think I was salty or too prideful about where I finished up in rank. I had a video where I talked about volume scrubbing. And the fact that just doing tremendous amount of attacks got people into their position this season. And I expressed distaste for that. So, I wanted to kind of give an example of that. Here is a guy who's 431 and 71. That's actually not too bad. But he's 36 and 272. He's 
fast approaching losing winning only one out of ten of his defensive battles over there. I I would hate that. If I logged in and constantly saw like negative fifty, negative seventy every day on my defense, I would shoot myself. If I was one of these people that is like five hundred and a hundred on offense Meaning, I'm losing a guaranteed fight every daily five. I, I would hate it. Absolutely hate it. But it seems like this door prize season... Um, it, it, this whole door prize season has enabled that. I don't think below 2000 border... That I would have ever seen. I mean, okay, this guy's got 712. But he's in the top 10. You would expect these numbers in the top 10. But here are people who still don't even match some of the volumes that I've seen. And they're in the top 10 over here. I mean, 806 is crazy. 712 is crazy. But this guy only has 264. This guy's got 275. I fought people around the 1900-2000 border that already had 500 attacks. In the last week of PvP, they would be like 500 and 120. Like, or, or you know, 400 wins and 120 losses on offense. That's crazy. And I dislike that because there's no efficiency in it. And there's no skill in it. It, it's just like water crashing on a dam. Eventually, the water will break the dam. But after how many years? How much bashing? So, you know, GG had asked in my video. He's like, why are you so upset about it? It's what I do. I'm not upset for the people who go above 2,000 with that kind of volume. It makes sense. But when you're at the 2,000, 1,900 border... And all your previous records have been shit, except for this season where suddenly you do 500 attacks. And you're up in high adamantium. It just seems like it's the set that did it. The set enabled multitudes of people to do huge amounts of attacks and they get their rank. Meanwhile, I only wound up losing four legit matches the entire season. To me, that's efficient, and that's something that I, I actually think it's really good. I don't think it's average. I think it's really good. I was 230 and 4. One of these is a refresh. I like that. That's efficiency. Defense, eh, 73 and 205. Only one about a third. And what is with my hand? I have two... I have two hands. There's a hand on the neurotrope and there's a hand behind it. It's like it's like doing this. Yeah, the animation of this suit is really messed up. So that was PvP, season 31, toxic suit, toxic worthy, toxic cloak and dagger. Um I would say that Spitlord was the only a uh, really, really good defensive team that gave you good numbers the entire season. Um, I actually saw a Spitlord team that had a winning defense. He was something like 150 on his defense or 80 and 50 or something like that. And that was the first time that I had ever seen somebody with a winning defense. Couldn't believe that. And, uh, yeah, the guy was strong. I beat him, but he was pretty strong. And whenever I looked at people's win-loss records, Spitlord teams were more closer to 50-50 than any other team this season. So it looked like Songbird's hesitant aim just completely locked down the enemy team there. Yeah, the graphics are weird for that aura. That aura is trying... Oh, I see. The aura is me. The aura is another agent superimposed over my agent. And what it is, he's still doing the... He's doing a brawl animation in the background there. That's really messed up. That's kind of funny. 
Yeah, what they're doing is they're superimposing a purple glowy agent over your agent. I mean, there were definitely other teams. That, there was... There were some spit cloak of daggers. There was some spit curse. Uh, I ran into a spit Ares on the last day, and I gotta admit, I was actually fearful of that team. I didn't want to get those guys established at all. My losses for the season was a 40k Loki with somebody. A... Uh, definitely a Spit Lord, and I forget what else I've lost to. My biggest deterrent... What is she going up in the air for? What was she dodging? Alright, that was a little weird. Um, my deterrents were lots of intangible. If, like, a whole team was intangible or somebody who had Scootum was also using intangible... And believe it or not, Fiza, when Fiza started to show up, she was a deterrent because she could prevent somebody from getting banished by my agent. If I try to banish somebody, she'll leave them alive at 86 hit points. Now, something that... Um, friend of the channels, JW, had brought up is that Fiza might get a nerf to her level 2. And at first I was like, what do you mean? That's, that's very balanced. And he said, no, if you give her an extra turn, there's nothing stopping her from locking down two different heroes with that ability. She uses it and then can use it again on somebody else. And I definitely think he's got a point. And when I do a specific video on Fiza and what she will mean for PvP going forward... That's something that I definitely want to touch on. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, one of the Twitch viewers, J Rod, has said, What if the purple version of you in the suit is you trying to break out of the vortex dimension and struggling to do it? Kind of like, uh, Aha's take on me when a guy's stuck in the comic dimension. I like feeding uh, the Neurotrope into Faiza because anything to give her an extra attack is just good. Because her level 1 stacks are really pretty and they, they come out pretty strong. Ah, there's her dodging a frag grenade. And a nice little counter. Did you get tailed by Faiza? This Wub Wub Cannon's probably going to show up in PvP. It's got some good stuff to it. But I think it's best used in the hands of a snappy service. It may be a little awkward on defense though. But I think it would work out pretty well on offense. So we're going to see right now if we could lock two people down. By the way, Lucio says, ah, pick it up. When he uses his boosted, um, when he uses his boosted abilities, uh, which is one of his moves in the game, he says, ah, let's pick it up. Alright, lockdown. Where's her extra turn? Hmm, strange. So it definitely seems like Songbird dodges pretty nicely. So he's locked down. Yup. Both of them are locked down. 
It's definite. If you give her lead the charge or something, or that extra turn from so Sonic Acceleration, it definitely allows her to lock two people down. And, yeah, they're getting held in place over here. Hippocratic Oath. Hippocratic Oath. So that is definitely something to consider going forward. That could be a way to abuse Fiza's abilities. And it definitely brings up JW's point that they may create a one-round cooldown on that. Alright, so we're going to train Songbird and look at her with her level 2. And then we will wrap up the wrap-up video. Glad I left a spot open for her. Because I almost had two people training for 32 hours. I do like the fact that the first level of training is, you know, gives you an another set of abilities. Because if you just had to use level 1s for a while, I think it would be obnoxious. Also, you know what? We, we talk about lead the charge and everything. Let's not forget Mantis. And this has been brought out by a few people. Mantis absolutely could enable Fiza to be an absolute killer. Amp it up will not, shouldn't stack with Beta Ray Bill because it's the same thing. So, all enemies get disoriented, all enemies get targeted, all enemies get internal bleeding, and here's, here's Dildo Gavel. All enemies get straining. Oh, she could become part of a drain meta here. I'm gonna go with disoriented. And I'm going to hit one of them with hesitant aim. Hesitant aim is definitely doing its job. It is really, it's, it seems to be above 50% for me, honestly. Cannon's doing okay. I mean, don't worry about the damage this agent is doing. He has no ISOs in the suit, so it's not a fair assessment of its capabilities. And I can tell you this week, I'm definitely going to be doing um, a pretty strong phase of video. And pairing her up with some interesting people and also discussing her impact on the next PvP. One spoiler is that I can say that people are telling me Faiza does use triage in level 1, which is good and bad. It's bad if you have a mystic or a warding essence because then she's doubling up protection when you have protection. It's, it's double condom, basically. But if you're not running one of those then it makes her extremely strong at that point. So we definitely want to attack this tactician because according to the suit, uh, I should be getting counters to the team when I do that. Songbird just loves blasters, I can tell you that much. What is she doing when she does that? Is she, like, dodging the combat? I don't know. That's really strange. Oh, she's giving me an extra turn. That's what that is when she does it. Wow. Grants combat reflexes to all allies when attacking or being attacked by a tactician. All right. Sonic Boom! We should get the Guile theme going on here. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Holy shit, is she trying to give me extra turns? Yeah, she's trying to give me extra turns. That's what she's doing. Level 
So let's see what happens when this tactician... Well, that could be the Neurotrope. It's hard to say that that came from the suit because of the Neurotrope. No, she's got combat re- I just turned my entire team into infiltrators. Yeah, I think this suit's gonna wind up showing up in PvP. I really do. That seemed particularly vicious. Songbird's fun. Songbird's fun, phase is fun. I, I, I compliment Playdom and giving us a lot of good heroes lately. There's the combat reflexes. Field medic when you're behind a shield is kind of ridiculous. It's it's really strong. Ha, <laughs> we just locked Celine out. And she's giving herself an extra turn here. Wow. Songbird is immediately proving to be really useful. And now she's going to get another turn because she attacked the blaster. And she tried to give herself another extra turn. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Actually, I should have attacked Mystique. What is she locked out from? Uh, that's weird. I've never seen this happen to her. Is it because she's channeling? Did they fix something already? Maybe they did just build in a cooldown to channeling or something. That was interesting. I mean, she's been hit twice, so the channeling's definitely broken at this point. God, locking Celine out is just so nice because Celine's just an obnoxious twat. Damn, 10k for a level 2 on Isode Songbird? That shows you how strong Fiza is and all the buffs that she gives the team. Alright, guys, there is. The PvP Season 31 wrap-up. We got to look at Songbird as a reward. The new suit. The Wub Wub Cannon. We got to talk about the season. All the things that we saw. Including its bugs and common teams. And we will definitely have videos coming up on the channel. Of what could potentially be the meta. Going forward. And specifically dealing with how FISA.